League of Legends is commonly attributed as one of the most toxic video games there is, and today we're exploring the most toxic players both new and old in the North American server. This list comprises people you probably know well of, and some that may not be so privy to the spotlight as others. But before we get on with the list, let's have a look at today's sponsor. Signal RGB is giving away this epic gaming PC that looks like the Nexus. The crystal is surrounded by an infinity mirror and it can be lifted to reveal the parts inside which are a 3070 Ti graphics card, an 11900K processor, 32GB of RAM, and a 1TB SSD. And by the way, all of this RGB is fully customizable with the Signal RGB application which controls and syncs RGB devices from any brand. What's very interesting is that Signal RGB even has a game integration so you can have your RGB reacting to the abilities you're casting. To enter the giveaway, click the link in the video description down below. Ninim is a challenger to trick Draven Twitch player on the North American server, although he originally is from Brazil. He is perhaps known as one of the most hated players on the server when it comes to high elo. Streamers like Nidhogg, Scrub Noob, Chase Chalk, Poe Belter and possibly Voidboy absolutely despise him. This is mainly because he is infamous for running it down, intentionally feeding, soft inting, and as well as griefing games. He is mostly known for playing his mains Twitch and Draven and he might possibly be friends with P Star Cillian or that they know of each other. The website OneTrick.gg also suggests that Ninim is the rank 1 on both Draven and Twitch of all time due to his high LP of 1666 LP with 120 games on Draven and 231 games of Twitch. When he he reached 166 LP, he was ranked 3 on the North American server behind Catavolt at rank 1 and Appa at rank 2. Ninim also has somewhat of an amateur career or rather venture as he has played in multiple NACL qualifiers, but it never really amounted to anything. Nevertheless, among his peers, he is often condemned when they're on the topic of him. For instance, Poe Belter talked about his experience with Ninim, saying he is the first person he has ever ticketed to ride games. You know what the most disturbing part of this entire thing is? Ninim is like 1400 LP. He's like top 20 on the ladder. He's griefed me so many times, like just hard, just hard, like not even like soft inting, just like hard inting. Like holy f he died at level one and he just right clicked down mid and started taking all my CS. He has actually hard griefed me enough to the point that I want to personally submit a ticket and get him permabend, which I've never done before. I've never been... I've never like disliked playing with someone so much that I want to submit a ticket and get them permabend but I'm gonna do it because he deserves it. So this caused Ninim to take extreme measures for revenge against Poe Belter. Po Belter basically gets the Sinish treatment every time they're in the same lobby nowadays. Ninim also has been in a Twitter drama with Karazmai, the Kano to be due to in-game beef. Essentially, Karazmai was taking the crashed bot wave since it was dying to the tower, but Ninim perceived that he could still harvest the wave. Psychopathic Top posted this Karazmai clip onto Twitter, seeing the situation as funny. Ninim also replied to the post as it was getting somewhat viral. C9 Emilia, however, saw this on her time timeline supposedly and also commented by saying, oh this was the Draven, the guy who repeatedly called me the F slur and went on about how NA women are inferior. Karazma also responded by posting the endgame results thanking him for the vape. At this screenshot one can also see that Ninim was going 18 deaths in the game together with his 15 death Natalius. When Scrub Noob was making a tier list of the best players he's played with, he listed Ninim as the best player to ever drop 30 deaths. Ninim, see that's another one, I've seen Ninim like carry games, but I've also seen him int more than any other AD carry player ever. During a Hums stream, an Ninim was trolling him, and then Hums talked about his disdain for him. Fat yo, Nim, I'm about to ban you, bro. Shut your ass up, you fucking dirty cheeser. You reject? Don't don't piss me off. I'm literally about to ban you. Shut up. Bro. Emilia also had a big beef with Ninim. In May of 2022, she posted on her Twitter, people really out here typing, you're Chinese, so you suck, and trying to claim it's not racist, and it's a group of known wind traders isn't an excuse. People use Chinese as an insult all the time to people who aren't wind trading. That excuse is ingenuine. Claiming someone for their race makes you racist, so shut your mouth up. Ninim then proceeded to quote retweet, showing a screenshot of her saying, go back to your server, no one wants you here, to Ninim, which is a Brazilian player. Uh, this of course was hypercritical and then she deleted her initial tweet, however she did respond to him. Telling someone to go back to their server because they flamed me for being NA, meaning they weren't from NA, I don't know what server they're from, and for being a woman the wool game is for sure the same as insulting someone's ethnicity. You have more than 5 IQ for sure. You're a sexist piece of shit, don't play on NA just to flame players for being NA. She also sarcastically said that, yeah I'm the one being unsportsmanlike when he calls me the F slur far before I type that. With a screenshot of Ninim typing, 
shipping, having to carry out the English slang for a cigarette. She also then proceeded to block him. Ninim has frequently dubbed Steven Jacks, another controversial NA content creator, and again, another drama occurred between Ninim and Chase Shaco, where Chase Shaco publicly called him out in a tweet that went somewhat viral. Chase Shaco was accusing Ninim of win trading on his alt account named Rex Peta, which is apparently his Rama's ADC account. Ninim later subtweeted about this in August of 2022, where he laughed about Chase Shaco blocking him and as well as calling him a cancer dog after getting the Rama's account into 1000 LP Challenger, while also accusing him of crying and being a snowflake. And get these f***ing dog shit Chinese win traders off of the server, man. Please accept this as a video report. Please do your f***ing jobs, Riot Games. Like, it's so blatant. I will, I will literally do this for you. I will send you these accounts. Like, give me a guy. I, no charge. I will give you all of these blatant win trade accounts. Give me a guy to send them to. He will do a once look over. You know, they're all obvious as shit. And then we can just ban them. But like these accounts, they just ruin every single game they're in. Like all night tonight, I was just getting traded on. Like fix the f***ing server, please man! It also seems like Nenim is competitively banned from Riot Games tournaments as his last team, Team Turner, announced that 3 out of 7 of their players were suspended pending a Riot investigation. However, only one of them were publicly mentioned and that was Duokin by Riot Games in August of 2023 in a competitive ruling. Nenim also made a tweet longer earlier in 2023 where he essentially said that during 2021 to 2022 his behavior was bad and that he has learned a lot this year. He stated that he got his first suspension from competitive play for one month in approximately August of 2022. He also got kicked in his previous team, possibly evil geniuses, since someone sent over a year old screenshot of something bad he said. You see, he was actually a part of the HPE Futures Combine program which aimed to develop talent in North America, facilitated of course by evil geniuses. Dakar is another player on NA who is regarded as incredibly toxic. He has been in the league scene for several years and his toxicity dates back to many years ago to even nowadays. According to his own Twitch channel, he states that the highest rank he's ever been was rank 3 in Season 3. Nowadays, he hovers Masters to Grandmasters ELO on the North American server while also recently gained Grandmasters on Korea. The car is mostly hated for having an ego, thinking that he's better than others while not owning up to his big talk. The car is also known for griefing games, allegedly harassing others, general in-game toxicity, and using his community to engage in bad behavior such as sending hate to other people. There are certain people on Twitter who has disapproved of the car's behavior on stream, such as one from Kakuki Kao asking why the car can AFK live on stream and not get punished for this behavior, or one from Tatted Sad Boy from telling me you hoped I ended my life as an early Christmas present yesterday to me absolutely destroying your top lane from a 2 kill lead. He also has had beef with another streamer named Geranimo, where essentially the car showcased his hypocrisy of attempting to reform and saying that Ling has one of the worst communities due to toxicity, but then in a classic post game manner, Geranimo flamed the car for saying that he is a nobody and makes zero money and has zero friends and that he makes bank. In another occasion, Geranimo engaged in the same behavior by saying that I think you probably should rethink playing champions that require skills. I mean your elo speaks for itself, can't really flame that. There's also a sizable amount of YouTube videos that document the car's toxic behavior. In a clip from 2018, the car rage quitted a rank game and then encouraged his viewers to do the same. I think we open. Artalia is empty. We're gonna leave right here. The Talia is either win trading or an Elo boosted player. There's no point playing that. Game is unwinnable from my end of the game. So what I'm gonna do is the uh, the honorable thing and just fucking leave, so the rest of the team can just end the game as soon as possible. Hard fucking yikes. Hard. Yikes. Ugh. Debating leaving this one because uh, this guy is worthless. Have been hard stuck honor zero for past year. Any tips on reforming or avoiding those chat restrictions other than mute all? Um, just leave, dude. If you feel like you're gonna sh somebody, if you're losing, just leave. Like if you're getting fucked, if you have an enter or something, just leave the game. That's what I've been doing. I don't get any issues with it. I get Lever Buster. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about Lever Buster. I just hop on another account and I queue up as soon as possible so I don't get those same inting fucks in the next game. In a clip from 2020, the car asked his audience to harass another player because said player had a bad game.
He's in champs, like, bless him, let's go. The car previously got banned on Twitch on two different occasions. The first one in 2020 was a ban due to him asking his audience to harass another player. The other ban occurred in 2022 and lasted for two weeks. According to himself, he badmouthed an anti-vaxxer. He acknowledged he went overboard, but he has a disdain for anti-vaxxers, basically, due to his political engagement. There is also multiple Reddit posts about the car's toxic behavior. For instance, one in 2021 talked about how he intentionally feeded and left a game after complaining about the state of the NA server. He also accused his teammates of win trading, but the ironic thing, according to the comments, is that his account was a reverse boosted account where he can smurf at bronze elo. I mean, there's definitely a lot of win trading going on in that elo. In 2018, the car flamed Tyler1 after tilting from a death. He accused Tyler1 of being mentally ill, and the peak irony here is that he later reported Tyler for negative attitude and intentionally feeding for being 8-7, while his final score was 6-12. Tyler didn't really mind, as his response was, don't need 300 viewers for 5 year streamer typing in my direction, stay silent boy. The car is also attributed to have been a catalyst for Duke King's recent competitive ban. The car initially accused Duke King 1, or better known as Consensual Clown back then, for harassing Remilia, who ended up in-game ending herself later. You're not high elo, so you can't, can't comment on that. Those people are human garbage. Those people getting banned and sh**, like Consensual Clown? That guy is human trash. He spent, he has spent years harassing Bromelia, dude. That guy is human garbage. They should keep him permanent. They should ban him on sight. He deserves the Tyler 1 treatment, the XJ9 treatment, the, you know, get rid of this f get him out of here. Tarzan, he's close. He's not as bad as Calm Clown. Tarzan's a douchebag. He'll take, he'll take champ select hostage. He'll int feed and stuff. I mean, I think he's a piece of but he's not as bad as Kong Clown, dude. There's crazy, there's nuts, there's bipolar or whatever Tarzan has, and then there's fucking legit sociopath, like, this man is insane. According to Duke King 1, the car's statements is the prime cause as to why a peculiar NA LGBTQ community is witch hunting him, and has thus far caused a two-year competitive ban for Duke King. This is the inciting incident, and uh, it comes from our, our dear friend Dakar. This guy ruined my life probably, but it's okay. So I know you guys You're not high. just heard that guy say that and you're gonna be like, damn, he, he must be telling the truth. But the reality is it's a complete lie. He has no evidence. It wasn't in all my games. It doesn't even make any sense. He just came up with it. And you may find that people actually use that infamous video clip as the basis for hating me. Just Dakar saying that. It's just convenient that everyone takes his word as gospel to virtue signal about me, but this guy's like actually evil. The car also had negative opinions on Rat IRL, which Mr. Ratatoni found funny and actually used the car's thoughts on Rat as his Twitch subscriber sound. Rat IRL and Apocalypse. If you watch those two people, you are human f***ing garbage. And in fact, please, please type their emotes in my chat so I can ban you and get rid of you. So don't have to deal with it. Rat RL also responded to the car by tweeting out, Don't try to trash talk if you play on one of the worst servers and lose in low elo while streaming for your 500 viewers. Nowadays though, it seems like the car has changed his opinion on him, as if you type Rat RL in his chat, he writes that he should be the poster boy for reformation instead of Tyler 1. In response to the criticism against his toxicity, he stated that when you make enemies with mentally ill people or those who idolize them, they generally will spend a lot more time and effort attacking you than someone who say mentally well adjusted. Tarzan is perhaps the go-to person people think of as one of the most toxic players on NA besides TF Blade. Tarzan has established an insanely good track record of achievements, being ranked 1 on the North American SoloQ server several times in season 6, 8, 9 and 10. He has also managed to reach top 50 in the span of a week in Korea. He is claimed to be the best jungler of NA. Tarzan is considered as a very talented player but is often also considered to be held back by attitude problems and has become infamous for that. Despite those issues, he still has managed to become a big content creator within the NA scene and somewhat respected as well. Just like Tyler1, Tarzan had an int list when he offered people to pay money to intentionally feed certain people. He also had a parallel dodge list. Early in his league career, Tarzan also boosted a lot and at one point claimed to have made $10,000 in just a month. At another instance, he claimed to have made over 75,000 Canadian dollars and would charge $4,000 for duo queue from 
0 to 600 LP. Tarsane also attempted to join the 2016 scouting ground, but he was denied an invitation. Riot cited in an email that, in your games over the last two months you exhibit an unacceptable amount of toxicity, including constant arguing with teammates and personal attacks. In addition, your social media persona is completely unacceptable for LOL esports, including a consistent use of slurs, overuse of profanity, and constant use of general and specific threats of violence. In more modern times though, Tarsane is often memed as a doctor since he consistently diagnoses his in-game teammates with cancer. He's a doctor though. Is he really? Stop. In a pasture. <laughs> in a father, yeah. No way. Yes, Stop. he's diagnosed Stop. about 15 p under. These people didn't know they had cancer. <laughs> Tarzan, Tarzan said he knew they had cancer. They went and got checked. They did. He's a doctor. Salute. Oh, Salute, shit. Tarzan. Dr. Tardy. Good job, bro. Oh, I swear shit. to God. It's I swear. It's Tarsane definitely has had some level of reform compared to his old self, but is still regarded as toxic nevertheless. Slurs and personal attacks had stumped, and he has genuinely shown steps to improve and intend to reform. In 2019, Tarsane was given a second chance by Riot and joined Tyler 1's Twitch Rivals team, which went undefeated and won the tournament. However, after winning the tournament, Tarsane announced that he was getting a 30-day ban from Twitch TV. Alright, well I have an announcement. Unfortunately, I'm getting a 30-day ban off Twitch, so... The reason I play really poorly this term is because they told me an hour before and then my whole my day has been really bad. So I've not been able to process information or you know, stay cheered up and perform with my team. So I'm really lucky that they carried me and I'll be making a Twitter response regarding this. So sorry for everyone. I mean this is the first time in a long time I can look at my chats. <laughs> Usually when I look at my chat, I just see a lot of hatred for the first time. <laughs> I look at my chat, I'm really happy for the community we've built. Thank you guys. In a tweet longer, he went into more details where he said, If you're not aware, I've always had the reputation of someone who's too toxic, shit teammate, etc. I agree with all of this and I'm not proud of it. The moment I faced my first whole 2016 scouting grounds denial, I just had a loser's attitude because of it and just said whatever. I'm gonna be an edgy piece of shit that does whatever he wants instead of bouncing back, recovering and actually trying to be a better person and I will forever regret it. For the first time in my life, I was seeing people support me. I truly couldn't believe it. The Reddit threads, reading my chat, the DMs on social media, I actually thought my redemption arc was going to be the real thing this time. I was actually going to utilize everything I've learned both as a person and as a player to do something with all my time spent into this game. I like being transparent and I don't want people to wonder about what I did so I will be as direct as possible without playing the victim card. Some player has been griefing me for years on stream so I stooped to his level and let him win. I was so upset at the time I wasn't even thinking about the things I was saying. Considering I have had a really good behavior I'm beyond disappointed in myself for doing this. The fact that this guy was messaging me through discord calling me the N and F words telling me to game end myself didn't mean I should ever get on his level. Tarsane also subsequently won another Twitch Rivals tournament in 2020 when he was picked by TF Blade's team. The mechanical player is also another person renowned for toxicity mostly due to his interactions with other people and on top of that he has beef with several established content creators. He is a Draven OTP and is a self-proclaimed rank 1 sh** talker. Mechanical player is also the inventor of the infamous heal catching technology on Draven which apparently is a strategy of maximizing the space in Draven's axe catching hitbox. Mechanical player claims that you can walk almost outside the box and catch your axes just by your heal, thus branding him as the heal catching inventor. He is known to have made many personal attacks with other streamers and as well as beefing with other individuals on Twitter. Mechanical player also claimed to be challenger rank, reaching that rank in season 8 on his alt account Erich according to League of Graphs, but ended Diamond 1. On Twitter however, he mentioned how he has been rank 15, rank 50 and challenger 4 times on NA while he ended Grandmaster 961 LP last split on his alt account Maronite before the season ended. It seems like Mechanical Player has played League since season 4, and his content creator career seems to have properly started as of 2023. However, he prides on his controversiality. The fact that IMACUTIPI called him faker but with a mental disability, Tyler asked him to shut up, and alleged
alleged player Sanchovis called him the LeBron James of roasting. He's gotten into numerous Twitter beefs as of recently, causing streamers and content creators like TF Blade and Amelia to despise him. What he is known the most for is his video flaming of TF Blade in March of 2023. In this 22 minute video, Mechanical Player responded to TF Blade who initially flamed Mechanical Player. Pathetic, how fucking bad. You see these people? Like they deserve to be flamed to the ground. Them being human is a disgrace to humanity. You should not be called a human mechanical player. More like mechanical f bug. Eject. You serious? All I say, don't ping me five foot one. Why do they even play the game? You waste so much time. Do you have nothing better to do in life? If they're not making a career out of it. Look at this. Look at this. Season four diamond. Season five diamond. Season six diamond. But some rejects can't even call human. The truth hurts sometimes. Fuck sh they have empathy and can't. They don't deserve any empathy. Their ego getting broken. If you flame them to the ground, maybe their ego breaks. He would go on to argue that TF Blade is a dwarf adjacent player since he barely qualifies as a dwarf in terms of his height. So, what constitutes dwarfism? Dwarfism is a short stature that results from a genetic or medical condition. We will get to the alleged medical condition at the end of the video. But listen, dwarfism is generally defined as an adult height of 4 foot 10 inches. Now, this guy, okay, this five foot one guy is three inches off being a dwarf. Now, that means we cannot call him a dwarf. I have a name for him, dwarf adjacent player. He is dwarf adjacent. So this is where dwarf is, he's right here. He's very close, he's so close, he's dwarf adjacent player. This is the guy who's not even here at the edge of the bell curve. He's not even at the edge of the bell curve. He's so small. Now listen, just, just so everyone knows, Tyler One, listen, Tyler One is not five foot six. I don't know why people keep telling me he's five foot six. He is six foot five, and if he's not, he certainly acts like he deserves to be six foot five. He's very funny. Let's open it up. Tyler's all the way over here. Tyler's like fucking deep. He is deep in the height. Tyler's crushing it in the U.S. male category. He's like right fucking here. But if he were five foot six, Tyler would still at least be on the curve of the bell curve. You're where it goes flat because they don't see people shorter than that. And if there's one thing that is accomplished with my ranting about you, it's that you're f***ing short. You're really f***ing short. Okay. All you have to claim for your achievements is being able to play a video game in the top lane, Tiny Top. That's all you have going for you. It's hilarious to me though, that these small little gremlins, whether a dwarf, a goblin, that's all that matters in his mind. It's like, as you can only justify having fun if you're making money. And that's why he's so scared of anyone finding out. He's so scared of anyone finding out. Imagine, oh my God, imagine this dweeb came up to me in real life. He would literally be like looking up like this. He wouldn't have a shot in hell to even get the- He'd be like, You- You- <laughs> Thus, he started nicknaming him Tiny Tomp. He also diagnosed TF Blade or Tiny Tomp with Fetal Alcohol Syndrome. Moving on. This is what Fetal Alcohol Syndrome is. Now, I am not going to make a claim that his mother drank during pregnancy, which led to TF Blade, the Tiny Blade, Tiny Top, dwarf adjacent player, having Fetal Alcohol Syndrome. Now there's also another thing called fetal alcohol effect, which is a subdued version. Perfect. Okay, we'll get to it. But let's start here. He has a small head. His eye opening right here and here, it's, it's about the edges of the eye. We can't really tell how low the nasal bridge is here because he covers it with his big glasses, but I would argue it's a low nasal bridge. What we do know is that he has a compromised mid face, right where you're supposed to have the normal lips that actually make big bumps and go up the ridges between your nose and your lip. The tiny blade dwarf adjacent player does not have that. He has a very compromised version of that. Now that would indicate fetal alcohol effect. I'm not claiming it. I'm not claiming his mother drank like a fish when he was pregnant, okay? No one here is making a legal claim 
that Tia Blade, the dwarf adjacent player's mother, drank like a fish and could not control herself during his pregnancy. But later corrected himself in saying that he has a fetal alcohol syndrome effect. Mechanical player would later unilaterally attribute himself for the reason as to why Tia Blade doesn't do camera streams anymore. Dantes did meet mechanical player in a solo queue game once and reminisced about this TF Blade incident, but added that mechanical player had allegedly paid for YouTube ads to promote his video of personally attacking TF Blade. Mechanical player reposted this video on his own TikTok channel and made no response to the allegations of him paying for the ad. But on Twitter he ambiguously mentioned that he started it, but someone else kept the ads rolling for a while. 10 out of 10 would do it again. He added proof by linking the ad spending over time, showcasing that it was at zero dollars. I hate to be the one to say this, but this time it wasn't me paying for that ad. I haven't paid an ad related to TF Blade in over two weeks. This means someone else is paying for you to see this. He further added that the ads will start up again soon with a new video. The mechanical player has also been accused of being a misogynist. In March of 2024, C9 Emilia tweeted that she still receives sexist comments even when she plays the jungler role, accusing gamers of just hating women. Mechanical player reacted by saying, you get challenger on support, but after 160 games, plus your super glue stuck in Emerald 3 on jungle, your top 7 most played champs, only one of them isn't negative win rate, and now your past 20 games are 45% win rate on Lilia. Maokai is a loser slash wrong. The truth though is your jungle stats showing enchanters are brain rot giga inflated role. Emilia then responded saying, I hit masters last season on ADC only, but okay let's flame me for being an elo inflated enchanter main because I'm struggling on a new role. Also this was a post about sexism. I didn't ask for your opinion on my jungle stats. I didn't ask for you to post 3 plus TikTok comments on my channel and tweets defaming and insulting me. ADC challenge impossible if you main Draven. Relax and take it if you're gonna dish it. Defaming! I flamed you on TikTok because you once again made multiple TikToks to flame the f*** out of someone. Page when literally nobody asked you. You claimed I was a misogynist? Garbil brain or what? Nothing I've ever done with my content was or is misogynistic. Priscilla, the person in question, obscurely tweeted about mechanical player stating you made 3 TikToks about me because I pinged you in a 15 minute solo queue game in which you went on my Twitter and made fun of my boyfriend, called me a stupid bitch said I was duo boosted by my boyfriend, then said I win treated every game to Grandmaster. I'm sure you would have said all that about a man. A few days later, Mechanical Player responded to Priscilla directly. Everything you said here, barring the parts about your boyfriend being a dog Baker, calling you stupid is a false claim, and I've said worse to many men. Do you think you were treated worse than TF Blade? Laughably delusional. He also tagged both her and her boyfriend in a tweet. He continually tweeted about the Emilia drama, doubling down on his take on her. He suggested that they both do a $10,000 bet to see who would climb to Masters the first if they both reverse their roles, but Emilia declined it. He later clarified that he doesn't think Emilia is boosted and that she earned the title of a challenger support player, but he thinks that Enchanter has such a low floor for high reward that it teaches you the most minimal amount possible about the game for LP. Furthermore, Mechanical Player ended the topic on Emilia, expressing weirdness on the fact that she proceeded to block him and as well as them both talking about the incident when they met each other in game during the Dantes hosted tournament. But 5 days later he brought up the topic of Emilia once again, sarcastically tweeting about how she demoted to Platinum 1 while playing jungle. Mechanical Player was further involved in multiple auto dramas, mainly because of his confrontational character. In another one, a challenger player died diagnosed the mechanical player with a solo queue illness known as the Peaker Syndrome, where a player will rapidly achieve a high rank for a short moment in time and then be a large amount of LP below their peak for a majority of their league career. In another one, which is an extension of the Emilia drama, the mechanical player beef with Polks, where they went back and forth with each other and at one point the mechanical player offered $25,000 on a boxing match between the two, but Polks later wanted to up it to $5,000. At one point, Jack Spectra, a highly regarded pro player, and as well as a respected Draven player, reacted to the mechanical player's heel catching technology. The Draven trick that inspired me to name myself the mechanical player. When you throw axes, the axe in your hitbox, you don't even have to be on it if you know Draven's edge of hitbox. But you don't know this that is be. why I am the mechanical player. Because I was able to, and I still can do it pretty well, I dodge so much, not because I script, but because I understand hitboxes better than every... any other player. <laughs> See that? That was triple at heel catch, by the way. Now, in River, because of CX, it looks even dumber. This is my number one pride and joy on it. 
This is something that if I could ever be known for- It drops one right this there! This is what I want to be known for. Oh, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. He found it to be very funny, of course, and also laughed about how Tyler1 was seeking advice from the mechanical player. Tyler can be, like, toxic, but he oh, hasn't- Let me make this thing clear. Oh, by the way, Tyler1 has, multiple on multiple occasions, post-game screen, uh, asked me how I play Draven solo. Has literally asked me, hey, mechanical player, how do I play Draven solo? <laughs> 36! Tyler lumped into 36! And we talked for like two hours post game one. <laughs> two hours! Who's Tyler one? was sitting in post game lobby asking how he was so f***ing good on Draven. How are you climbing on Draven in this climate? Yeah, I'm sure Tyler won't type that, bro. The mechanical player responded to these reactions in a TikTok, but essentially just said he was intentionally missing some of the axes to showcase that the technology wasn't entirely OP brain dead strategy. But in a streamer tire list posted to Twitter, he put Jack Spectra on trash can not worth click on people file allegedly tier because he is a paycheck thief and a fanboy. The mechanical player also hosts his own website intended to coach players for $50 per hour. Dardog is a former pro player from the North American scene and he's mostly known for being extremely blunt, direct and damningly honest about his opinions and thoughts. Because of this, he has gained a reputation of being incredibly toxic as a teammate within the various pro teams he has been on. Dardog's career spanned over several years all the way back to 2014. It was not until in 2016 that he started started off his career in the LCS for Team Liquid and after having an undefeated qualifier run for the NACS spring season. While playing in the LCS, he won the Rookie of the Year award. Early into the 2016 season, Dardog began to be recognized not only as one of the best rookies in North America, but even the best North American resident jungle overall in the tournament. He was particularly known for his leasing mechanical skills. Team Liquid went on to finish the playoffs in fourth place. Things with the team wasn't going so well though, as Dardog would later be suspended by the team for behavioral problems and team dynamic issues ahead of the next split. There were many controversies surrounding him, and especially during Team Liquid, many of the behavioral problems were showcased in the YouTube documentary series named Breaking Point, which convinced the community that Dardog criticized his teammates in a disrespectful manner. I can't be friends with this person and they don't they won't put their first foot forward, and it's hard to facilitate that at all, and I think you're a part of that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm asking you to fix a problem I don't know how to fix, and I guess it's hard for you to fix it yourself, so I don't know. Right, right there, exactly right there. He's saying something to reply to, like, what you just mm -hmm. said, and you just look at him, bare in the face, close your eyes, and roll your eyes. Like, that is so disrespectful, and, yeah, like, how do you think that makes, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, just straight up, you don't take into, like, players' feelings at all with anything you do as a coach. Like, me and Piglet, for example, we can take the harsh criticism that you give because, yeah, we have thick skin, but, like, all of us aren't going to have thick skin, and the way that you, like, treat Matt and Sam is, like, yeah, that's f***ing bullshit, dude. I want to be friendly, but if you make the same mistakes over and over again, like, don't complain about things, don't do this, don't do this, and then we consistently do it, like, it's hard for me to, like, care about you. Like, like is, I mean, in your you mind, con you contradict yourself all the time, like, just now you're using... When, when you bring up a fault on yourself, you mm -hmm. bring up someone else's fault, which in this case was mine, instead of admitting your own fault and then trying I to fix it. Say and it's all, hard no, no, for no, 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 let me finish. And okay, also, finish. You, you also just made excuses for yourself on top of it, which you tell Matt and others not to do all the time. Okay, my bad. He also frequently had many altercations mainly with his head coach, and even at one point made his stand against the CEO of Team Liquid. You've been doing some things that haven't been great, right? Yeah. You've been uh, on LCS days, in-game, you've been kind of saying things that you shouldn't be saying during the game that's not very good for like team morale. Um, it's kind of hurting the way the people, the players play the game and we're, lo we're not increasing our odds of winning because of that match because of the things that you're saying in game. The coaching staff doesn't want to work with you. Um, they feel like it's a really unprofessional, unhealthy work environment. Obviously, from a business standpoint, I have to, I'm paying all of their salaries, plus Logo's salary, plus your salary, plus like Piglet's salary that you know didn't want, you guys had your issue as well. I am investing a ton of money, so it's extremely costly for me to run a business where I'm investing into things and then they want to just like quit because of the environment that's being created. As a businessman, like I can't do that. I can't 
put all that money and resources into something that's not working. It's just all, not all working. All those things, they all, did, they all did the opposite of help, actually. Like, talking to Loco definitely doesn't help. I think that the team environment is not just a... I hate that everything is just put right onto me. Like, I'm well, the no, no, here, here's the thing. There are... No, listen, listen. There are other things that are going on. Trust me. Hey, don't say that to me. Well, like, at the just, very like, least, cut me off in the middle of the conversation. No, no, like in the middle of my point. If you're gonna give me a bottom lane that's playing at like a diamond five level, that's absolutely unacceptable. And then you're coming to me, telling me that my attitude's a problem when he's not even putting forth. Uh, I think the degree of effort, yes, maybe that's the degree of effort. At, and how but, am I supposed to meet that with? It's okay, guys. We can still win. It's okay, guys. They all yeah. underperformed. Fabi had a, a very small time where he was performing right. really well, and then he got complacent and lazy, and now look where he's at. He's getting smashed by Apollo and Expecial. Yeah, I think, I think that there's definitely valid points to that. I think that we need to make greater strides. I don't think that you can say that I've made all this progress. Dardo clearly was not sugarcoating things and bluntly spoke his opinions of how the team's performance was. His confidence in his own abilities was extensive and during pro play he would also beam other players, such as writing XD in a pro game often considered taboo. His departure from Team Liquid would become a frequent trend with Dardo though. His LCS path consisted of brief playing stints with a staggering 9 total LCS esport teams such as CLG, Echo Fox, TSM, Team Dignitas, and Immortals. He was once considered as a rising NA superstar, widely applauded with his mechanical prowess, but this prodigy's behavior issues paved the path for his own downfall. Towards 2022, Darduk would seemingly not be able to sign with LCS organizations. He stayed with Immortals as an assistant coach until June of 2022, and later joined their academy team as a head coach. Towards late 2022, he would enter his NA Challenger Series era of stagnation, where he he joined further teams like San Tomas, Team Fish Taco, and now playing for Mirage Alliance. He would also switch from jungle to support while playing for Mirage Alliance, which is considered as one of the strongest teams at the North American amateur scene. Clearly, he was equipped for this role as he ended the season with over 1000 LP on two support accounts in 2023. He also reached rank 1 in the early season of League at 1151 LP. Dardog also apparently pitched the Mirage Alliance roster to the founder while claiming that role swapping was always in the back of my hand, but it was a no-brainer to do it alongside my boys. However, Dardog did also tweet about the famous Team Liquid documentary, which did display Dardog's behavior. Good to know League Reddit is still holding the contents of a video made to portray me in the worst way possible at 18 years of age over my head. So awesome to be reminded after probably my largest year of growth as a person and later that the community will always view me as the pick-me-whatever kid from Breaking Point. So far, Dardog has been in the amateur scene without incident, indicating that he has Improved. Nice. Alright, done, done, done. Yeah. We had, we had, we had. Yeah, that's just good shit, boys. Good shit. We did give a main a few too many shutdowns for my. <laughs> and then she, okay, she did nothing after with them. It's fine. Like she did literally. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to play some content sometime. I got a little bit sweaty.